Pfizer, welcome to Profoundly Speaking. It's a weekly conversation that we have every Sunday at this time. Uh, really just speaking into your life, speaking uh, to the clarity of your mind as you pursue your divine reality, which is already within you. This divine reality is already within you. It's not a crazy experience. It's already within you. It's an, it's an embracing of your highest consciousness and your highest dimension of, of thought and being. Um, it's you. It's not uh, new information that's going to be downloaded into you because every day you hear something that's telling you to move into an unorthodox situation. Every day you are hearing something that's telling you to move into a very unorthodox situation, something that you have not seen planned out. But however, as we are moving into these unorthodox situations, there is a structure of faith and knowing and thought. How do we manage the moments we have? How do we steward the moments we have? And when I use the word steward, I'm not just meaning money. But how do we steward time and our emotion and our spirit and our relationships? How do we steward the basic things that we've been given? Because so many times we look at the deep things of God and we just know that God has given us the best. But God progresses us to the best by seeing how well we manage the basic so we can overcome the feelings of torment when it's time to move into the unorthodox and supernatural areas of life. Um, how do we manage the basic? How do we manage love? How do we manage the realm of the spirit? How do we manage it? Uh, every one of us have been taught according to how we listen. Um, all of us have been taught according to what we were afraid to do. God speaks to us all. God speaks because he made all of us. God speaks to us all, but it's up to us to manage time, spirit, and purpose. And so me personally, I'm not, I'm not your answer. I just show you how to connect to the solution that's already within you. Now, because it's already within us, we choose the pace of our commitment to it. We choose the pace of, of how much of ourselves that we're going to devote to this divine reality within us. Now, I gave all of my life to it. I didn't give my life to a thought of what someone said. I gave all of my life to what I saw within me. And I didn't always do it right. What is doing it right? Well, your mistakes and fruitlessness and, and malnutrition would tell you if you ate right or not. I can't tell you all of what is good and bad. You have to observe what's complete and what's truth and what's proper. Now, all of us have our different methods and mechanisms at it. Uh, how much carnality we could maintain, how much flexibility we could maintain. Uh, I can't govern that. I can't govern that. I could only show you the accountability and the commitment based on your level of trust in my methods in helping you. You know, I wrote something earlier, and I hope all of you are doing well. If you want to lose weight and lose inches off your body and be built, you know, we could always look in magazines and see the folks with the six-pack abs and you see the belt 
I used to look at the pictures, you know, the brothers had the abs and you see that belt, you know, the belly wasn't hanging over the belt. You could see the belt and everything, jeans loose. And you could love what you see. You could say, I want to look like that until they tell you how to get like that. Raise hands if you hear me. We want to look like that until those who are physically fit begin to explain how to get like that. You know what I'm saying? We adore what we see. The, the eyes of men adore what we see, but it's the hearts of men that won't embrace it. I want to look like that. I want that influence. I, everyone, we, we, there is something we see. You, you, people can see me from around the country. I want you to show me, teach me. Because they're, 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 they're hearing and experiencing the physique of the kingdom, the, the words, the terminology, the swag, the talk. The, everyone sees how they could feel the inspiration and the information until they ask the trainer, show me how to get that. And sometimes when you begin to teach a person how to get what they see in their life, the heart says, oh, Oh, that's it? Oh, that's what you did? Oh. And that's how it is with the anointing or with uh, with influence. Most people are not really looking for anointing. They're looking for power. They're looking for happiness. Most people are not looking for anointing. How many of you are really desiring the anointing? Or... I just want to live in a situation where no one has to correct me. I want to be my own superpower. Do you want to be your own power or are you looking for anointing? Because if I want to, to move into my Christness, I'm saying that I want to move into an anointing, a, 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 a yoke breaking reality. I want to move into being what I was made to be before the foundation of the world. The blessing that I'm looking for is not just a stressless life for me. I'm not looking to maintain who I am. And God has promised me a stressless existence as me. Because most of us are seeking a stressless existence as who we are right now. And we think that God has promised that to me, the person I am right now, that I've been promised a stressless, prosperity-filled existence as me. But when I crave and yearn for the anointing, I'm seeking to be my Christ reality not a dual coexistence between who I am and a Christ identity, but a total exchange of who I think I am so I could carry out the will of the Christ in me. And so therefore, if I'm going to be that living Christ, not a living Christ in an Andre version, but I'm being a living Christ in a, in a Jesus version, then there is a management and a structure and a moving away from illusion, a moving away from convenience. No, I'm not your answer. I've, I've disappointed a lot of people. I've hurt a lot of people with my persona, with my ability to attention to detail with my finality. Maybe because I never offered a flexibility between who I think I am and who God made me to be. Because when God spoke a promise to me, he didn't speak it to the person that was dying he spoke it to the one from the beginning. And the struggles that we have is we're still living as an illusion. 
with a remembrance of what God spoke to who we are, but who we've never met. God has spoke promises and power in his scriptures and in his word to an identity that we never met in ourselves. We know who we are. And the person who's dying has read the Bible and remembered the scriptures. But the person who read the, the, the scriptures and remembered what God said is not the person that the promise was given to because this person who's remembering the scriptures, the scriptures will soon be dead, will soon be moved away in order to connect with the identity who we never met, but we existed before. How many of you understand what I'm saying? I'm The Holy Spirit is leading me to meet the me that I never met, but I lived and existed before the foundation of the world. And that debt, that debt to self is not just a debt to lying and cussing and dancing and drinking and, and maneuvering, but a debt of, a, of an identity that I am more familiar with than the original being that I was spoken into before the foundation of the world. I died to me in order to meet the me that was always with God. I'm, I, I'm dying to me to encounter the me that I never met, but I've existed as before the foundation of the world. Because as long as I live in who I am now, I only could go back so far. But the Holy Spirit is the navigator. He's not just a, a communicator. He's a navigator of dimensions. And so this navigator of dimensions is reaching in the me that I never met through the me that I know and causing me to make a decision between both me's, both who I think I am. This Holy Spirit is connected to the me that carries all of the power, but he's speaking to that me through the me that I know. And it's up to me to let the Holy Spirit reach the me that I never met, but, as I, but that I've always existed as, and to allow the Holy Spirit to give that original me preeminence over the me that I know and allowing that divine reality to live as the new me in this earth, dying to myself. Because I'm existing as divine and common at the same time. And my commonness is hearing what the spirit is trying to do to me. But my mistake is when I think that the me that I'm familiar with is the one that's being made the promise to. And the me that I'm familiar with must go to the grave of nothingness. And so sometimes God will send your regular self to a teacher in order for that teacher to destroy and help dismantle your familiar self in order to break open the possibilities of your new self. Am I making sense? God will speak to the you that you're familiar with and get you addicted to the sound. But the addiction is leading you to a total dismantling in order for the Holy Spirit to reach in the you that you've never met in order to bring that preordained you to the forefront. So every God-ordained mentor is going to disappoint one of your identities. Every God-ordained teacher is going to embarrass and insult and destroy and remake and dismantle the familiarity of one identity in order to release the destiny of the other. The teacher is not over your destiny. 
the teacher is over your death. The teacher is not the Lord. A spiritual father is not the Lord of your destiny. He's the executor of the death of your illusion. Every spiritual father is designed to kill the illusion that you lived in in order for the promise that you heard to come to pass. And sometimes the tragedy is the illusion gets away from the sacrificial altar and begins to roam the earth with the secrets of, of the spirit in an illusionary body. And it begins to pervert the kingdom's thoughts by mixing in its illusionary identity in a kingdom and therefore you get religion. Religion is the, is the brainchild of an illusion that got away and didn't die. And it mixed the things of God and mixed it in with the things of the illusion. And therefore we have discrimination and prejudice and racism and religiosity and judgment and, and dogma because the illusion taught the word instead of the original being teaching the word. Because when God teaches God, we all understand. But when debt teaches God, we have an illusion. When God teaches God, we all understand. But when a dying thing teaches God, we have an illusion. Am I making sense? When the blind teach light, we can't see. But when light teaches light, we all can see. And the problem is, is illusions have taught light. And that's what happens when the illusionary identity roams the earth teaching the mysteries of the kingdom and it creates a temporary affair. So the, the job of the father is to kill the illusion, to kill the illusion. God will send you to the one that's going to kill you. God will send you to the one that's going to break you from the grasp of that blindness in order for the light to see, in order for purpose to really show. And the, the issue is when we don't die to the illusion and we spread the gospel through the package of something that's going to die, isn't that something? So no, I'm, I'm not the answer. I want you to see the answer. But the identity that you are holding on to. And see, I, I can't tell you when that identity needs to go. Your constant frustration and your inability to hold the weight of the glory that lets you know that you're not strong enough. When we don't have the ability to consistently hold the weight of the oneness, to keep dropping the ball, keep resorting back to minuscule and common ideas, knowing it in our heart, knowing it in our own soul. No one has to come in and tell you you already know that this life has to die because the you that you're familiar with is not the one that's been given the promise. It's the identity that you don't know a lot of, the identity you forgot because you can't afford to remember who you are while existing as the same familiar being that you are. You can't remember who you are while maintaining the illusionary identity that you're living in. You can't remember the beginning while living in the hypothetical. Raise your hands if you understand what I'm talking about. So it's possible 
to see with our eyes and what we adore. But when we have to encounter what it's like to get it, the heart doesn't want it. We all like to be children of God until we hear that we are sons of God. Our heart can't handle the responsibility in being named with God as God through God. Can I handle being who the Lord is? Because it's sacrilege to the identity that's a rogue. It makes sense to the identity that I've never met. But it doesn't make sense to what I know of me in the now. And therefore, I find myself not being able to carry the weight. I want what I am now to embrace the godness, but what I am now is not designed to embrace it. What I am now must be killed at the hands of my teacher in order for the identity that I've never met to take the preeminence and I begin to walk as the glory. Because if I want to maintain what I am now, having that glory becomes an ego instead of power, instead of anointing. <coughs> it becomes a proving point to other people. See, and I won't hold you, a lot of our spirituality right now is just petty, braggadocious who's against what. <clears throat> because we want to prove to other people that God spoke to us. Well, I want to let you know something. God speaks to all. But God didn't speak to the rogue to the mismanaged version of you. That mismanaged version peeked in on a conversation between God and your original self. And we interpret that conversation to mean us when it's really God speaking to your eternal self and not your dead self. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And this, what I'm saying is for the serious realist, the serious realizer of spirituality. What I'm speaking is not a shouting terminology or shouting, a shouting subject for the average churchgoer. Our church methodology is really unorthodox. Look at how we communicate now. But our kingdom power is of ultimate excellence. So I'm not really speaking to the average churchgoer. I'm speaking to those who are serious about realization. Write that down, divine realization. I'm speaking to those who are serious about realizing the shift in identity because the average churchgoer is not going to understand what I'm saying. And sometimes the average churchgoer is not even asking for what I'm saying. Sometimes the average churchgoer is, is praying for a stress-free week. But well, this is not for those seeking a stress-free week. This is not really helping those who are seeking a stress free week at work. But I'm looking for those who are looking for eternal peace. Not in heaven, but in their identity. A peace that is the result of breaking away from a mental prison. And therefore, you're daily evolving into your greatest expression of self. 
And that self is turning into a life of proper management, spiritual union with God and man, and a creative force where you are walking in the daily power of the anointing. You know, I'm going to say this. People would say if we, if we would live this life right, people would ask us questions. What do, how do you live that way? But I'm going to tell you something. A lot of people could see you driving a nice car and living in a nice house and ask how you got it. And when you tell them how you got it, the value of it will determine if they want to live it and make the exchange. People love and adore things with their eyes but their hearts won't allow them to have it. If they feel it's unreachable or if they have to give up or if they have to subject themselves to a great responsibility, they'll, they'll make that a delayed gratification and we will live waiting for someone to give it to us for free. Because if I have to think hard and concentrate and and let go of this illusion. I'll wait to get it used. I'll wait till someone throws it away and I'll take the leftovers. I'll, I'll, I'll get a discount. Raise your hands if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, this kingdom is about an exchange. That was a man in the field. That was a certain treasure in the field. And the man saw this treasure and he sold everything he had to not only buy the treasure, but the field too. There was this treasure in the field and this man sold everything with joy. He wasn't coerced to do it. As a matter of fact, he put the demand on himself to get rid of everything he had. He didn't pay the cost that was on the box. He came up with the fee, which means I will exchange everything for not only the treasure, but the field too. The treasure didn't have a cost on it. It was in the field. So he saw something that he wanted in the field and he determined to give everything. Maybe giving half would have been enough, but he determined that everything was legitimate to get this one thing. He determined everything. I'm everything. He determined it. God didn't tell him what to pay. His desire for the field told him what to pay. His desire for the field told him Give everything. Let there not be no residue of the past. So, in your realization of this anointing, are you hearing everything? No one's telling you to do it. Are you hearing everything? I'm, I'm asking, are you hearing everything with joy? not with grief and reluctance, because the scripture said with joy, he sold everything and bought not only the treasure, but the field. And Jesus said, the kingdom is like that. You determine, I'm giving everything. With joy, not to please the salesman, not to please the seller because the treasure is laying in the field. He bought the field. He probably didn't tell him it was a treasure in it. He bought the field with it. So, I'm not talking to the common churchgoer. I'm talking to the realizer. The, re the person who realizes that I haven't tapped into my original self. Oh, you can say it alone. I want that. Yeah, everyone wants that with their eyes. 
It's the heart that tells the story. Every one of us wants it. I want it. I want the Lord. Now, all of us say it with our mouths. But when it's time to recognize emotional loyalty, look at where our emotional loyalty is not just decisions. It's not just what we're supposed to do. Look at where your heart is. We follow our heart. We don't always follow principle. We follow our hearts. We follow what makes us feel safe. We don't always follow God. We follow our illusion. No, I'm not the answer. Uh, I, I'm, I may be a good sound until I introduce you to a strategy. And you might not like it. And then you leave it. And then talk about me. You may like what I talk about until I lead you to a way or a method. And then you'd quit it and talk about me. And I'm the worst person in the world. And and don't have the love of God and stuff like that. Because the methods don't match your madness or your desire. So I can't tell you what to do. I can only tell you if you come to my house to eat. If you come to my house to eat. But then after I tell you all of the secrets and all of what, all of a sudden I could be a bad person and you could leave. But look what everything I done told you. Look, look, so now I can go try this out. I'm a, I got what I needed. And some people follow Jesus like that. You get a few loaves. You say, I could make it with these loaves. Now I will quit and go and use these loaves that you showed me. And I tell the world how bad you are. No, I'm not the answer. But I could show you how to realize it if you want. So, no need to struggle in going back and forth through these teachings and who's going to do what. How much of it have you realized and have you decided that everything was the right price to pay? Have you decided? I'm not telling you what to pay. I don't sell kingdoms. But you have to realize it's everything enough for you to exchange in order to realize this reality. I'm Andre Pfizer. If you want to sow financially into the work, as a partner, you can at our cash app at dollar sign Coach Pfizer, or you could give through the financial investment on our app. You can find our Pfizer Interglobal app in the App Store or Google Play Stores, Pfizer Interglobal, and download it. And in the app, there is a financial investment link that breaks down everything in the app and you can you can give or you can sell. You can send a gift however you want to send it. There is a way to do it. I found out there is a way to do everything you want to do. There is no traffic jam when you want to get there. You, There is a way to do whatever you see the honor in doing. So, are you looking at this kingdom with your eyes? Or have you embraced it in your heart? Only you would know that. I'm Andre Pfizer. And I appreciate your time in tuning in to Profoundly Speaking. Also, we're on Roku and Amazon. You could watch us through the APR TV. Always press record channel. Download the channel to your streaming uh, television and you can watch our past shows. We're on television too. We have an app and we have a TV, TV show. You can watch what you're watching here on TV every day. 
Whatever you want, there is a way. Whatever you truly hunger for, the food is available. You don't have to apologize to the chef for not eating. <clears throat> Whenever you have a taste for the diet, the food is there. You got me? Peace and love, okay?